Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Now, with the expected uh, easing of lockdown, airfields are starting to reopen and I know that many of you will be desperate to get back in the air. Of course, there's loads of other factors to be taken into account uh, before you go flying, but one of the big ones that I'm worried is being neglected at the moment is the weather. It's been a while since you've flown, so your weather mind may not quite be what it was, apart from uh, probably just observing that the weather's been pretty darn perfect for flying since we went into lockdown. Now, it hasn't been great all the time, although you would have thought to yourself it has. It has actually been quite turbulent. Um, but I think generally many of us would have thought, oh, I could have been flying today uh, and instead I'm stuck in, in lockdown. So uh, it's time to get your weather knowledge built up a little bit. And what I wanted to do here was just to give you some heads up as to some of the things that I think you need to be aware of weather-wise as perhaps you start to think the aircraft out to go for your first few flights and you're probably a little rusty um, as far as met knowledge is concerned. Now, there's a few important things to note and the first one is that at the moment forms 215 are not being amended continuously so they're still being issued by the Met Office. The Met Office do this on behalf of the CAA but usually they are continuously monitored and updated. Having said that 215 is still the best source of weather information if you're going to go flying today and of course it's the official weather documentation as well. You know that I'm no big fan of apps so one of my top tips would be to put your apps away and get yourself familiar with what the real weather story is doing. Apps despite them saying they give you forecasts for specific locations don't. They give you the forecast for the nearest model point to your airfield and while they're handy to use and have a glance at you certainly shouldn't be using them as the basis as to whether you go flying. So just do be aware of that, that Form 215 isn't being amended. However, this is the time to take advantage and scroll through some 215s. Teach yourself those abbreviations. And in fact, I've got a YouTube video that I did uh, explaining Forms 214 and 215 and how you can get more from them for your flying. And I'll put a link here for you to that video. Now, the other thing to note is that TAFs at the moment are only being updated every six hours, not three hourly. Um, many of them are usually updated every three hours, uh, but for now, they're only being updated every six hours. However, they are being amended still, so there will be updates to them uh, that are made as usual. So that's something important for those of you who use TAFs. Also, the aerodrome warnings that we get issued, many of those aren't in play at the moment. It's only airfields that are supporting helicopter operations, and all this information is uh, courtesy of the CIA and the Met Office, but only those uh, airfields that support helicopter operations are currently issuing uh, weather warnings for aerodromes. So just be aware of that. Now, when it comes to flying, just be aware that things are going to feel different because you haven't flown for several weeks. It's bumpy up there and more bumpy than you'll remember. So turbulence is going to feel worse than it would do usually. So when you go flying, expect there to be more bumps than you've probably been used to. As a student, I feel all of those bumps still, but I know that many of you don't because you've been doing it for so long the bumps kind of are just part of the natural ride but you will feel those bumps so do take notice uh, particularly when there's warnings of turbulence that are issued in form 215 that you're probably going to notice it more than you usually would and also be aware of more turbulent situations so things like showers so if we've got a showery day let's say a polar maritime air mass and from the northwest and that's bringing showers that classic sunshine and showery day when there's cumulus clouds yes you would expect there to be some turbulence because of the thermals associated with those but you'll probably notice them more also something else to notice is that if we get some warm days um, you'll notice that turbulence is more prevalent as well again it's that thermic effect but you'll probably notice that more than you usually would and light turbulence which goes unnoticed i think you're going to be uh, you're going to be picking up on and just while we talk about that, let's think about surface winds as well. 
I'd be adding at least five knots onto the forecast surface wind. Now that's through apps and also through TAFs as well, just to give you some leeway to that crosswind component. Because don't forget, even though we might forecast a wind of 12 knots at the surface, that's a very specific 12 knots. So much of wind speed is dependent on local effects. So whether there's a hangar close to the runway, whether there are hedges, whether there are trees. So to be on the safe side, I would be adding five knots onto that prediction. And those of you who've been to weather school will know how to forecast the surface winds uh, from the charts. So uh, again, add five knots onto whatever you decide there. Another thing as well that I think I'd do is probably pull out those met books, have a quick glance through, reread them, look at particularly things like fronts, look at the, the weather associated with fronts. You don't need to memorize that 3D model, but just get a pattern in your mind as to what you might expect from fronts. Also read the section on icing. Now I'm hoping icing won't become too much of a problem, but reread it, refresh your memory as to um, as to what conditions can lead or what atmospheric conditions can lead to icing. And this general being aware of the weather, that bigger picture is absolutely key. At the WeatherWeb website, we update uh, the surface charts right the way throughout the day. So again, I'll put a link here. Those are completely free charts that you can just go to, have a look at them, see how things are evolving, look at the satellite picture as well, compare the satellite picture to the analysis chart and help yourself to build your weather knowledge. The best local forecaster at your local airfield actually is you. Just be weather aware, look at the weather, feel the weather on your skin, smell the weather, see what it's doing, let it get under your fingernails and your weather knowledge will rapidly improve. Now, of course, you can improve your knowledge more by coming along to one of my online weather schools and you can get the latest dates for those and book online now and find out more information about them at weatherschool.co.uk. The aim is to build your confidence in you being able to make predictions yourself and forecast that weather up to four or five days in advance and also to get your confidence built in the official forecasts that you're seeing as well. Also online is my pilot's guide to skew tees. Now skew tees are amazing because they help you forecast up to um, uh, what, seven days in advance and you get cloud bases, you get cloud tops from those, you get um, freezing levels, showers, whether it's going to rain, whether there'll be fog and you get wind at every level as well and during the early stages of the forecast period those winds are forecast for every three hours. So that's a pilot's guide to skew tees and you can go and take a look at that now at weatherschool.co.uk. The online course, the weather school, uh, Aviation Weather School online part one course is presented live by me. The, <clears throat> excuse me, skew tee course is uh, a recorded course that you can take at your leisure. It takes about three hours to do that course. And then of course, I also have my book and my DVD. So that is uh, the Pocket Weather Forecaster, which has got uh, pictures of clouds and the weather that they bring. It's perfect for every pilot just to have a glance through, to familiarise yourself with the clouds and the weather that they bring. Uh, perfect book for you there. Again, order from Weather School. And then my DVD, Weatherwise, which is um, two hours of little five minute videos explaining various elements of the weather, such as fronts, such as air masses, such as when it's going to rain, where, how to forecast showers. That information is contained on there as well, all from weatherschool.co.uk. And of course, um, at the Weather School site, I've also got links to my Weather School Bytes videos, uh, which you can go and watch, which are little individual sections of weather nuggets of information that you can familiarise yourself with and build your weather knowledge. So if you are going flying this week and you jammy so-and-sos, if you are, we students at the moment, of course, have got to wait for a wee while. Uh, let us know how you get on, but do be weather aware. Now is your time to build that weather knowledge. Take your time, read through the forecasts and familiarise yourself with what the weather is going to be doing out there. Do have a great time if you're going flying. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you very soon. Thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.